any kind of final advice that we that we haven't covered that you would that you'd want to give to, to to players out there you know things that you think people are missing one important thing the grinding mentality it's not what you think i think it's it's about the quality of the hours not the quantity mm. of the hours because i think it's just the quality you can become a very good player just by playing three hours a day be in the meta but also understand the quality of the time you know like you need to adopt to the meta and be good Hey guys, my name is Aplox and I'm a professional Valorant coach. This series of podcasts is aimed at bringing you the behind the scene knowledge that you need to become an esports pro. We talk to people at the top of their game, some of the best players, the best coaches, the best organisational staff in the world to bring you the things that they know that you can't find anywhere else. In today's episode, we're talking to Nukier. Nukier is one of the most accomplished VCT players. He's been playing in VCT since the conception of the league. So much knowledge and so many different teams. He's someone that I think brings so much information that you really can't find anywhere else. How many other people have been on multiple teams across the whole length of VCT? We talk a little bit about his journey. We talk about how challenging it is to be a VCT pro, why he thinks that he's not on a team right now and where he thinks he needs to improve and just some of the tips that he's picked up along the way, along his journey, and some of the mistakes that he's made so that you don't make them too and you can accelerate your growth. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation. Your context, you have, uh, it, it was actually, um, it was the, the tweet that Yinsu did that said that you'd played the most games. That I was like, oh, you know, why haven't I messaged Nuki? You know, I was like, this is such an obvious person to have messaged. Why didn't I do this? And I thought, since you're, not on a team right now you're one of the few people i can reach out to that might have some time to sit down and have a conversation so this is a little opportunistic and i think hopefully this will work out really well for the audience because you've got so much experience you've been on so many teams like you've you've got a whole story oh to tell too. right yeah uh, oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah lots of lots of, lot, lots of that and i think and i think that stuff's important as well right like Drama will almost certainly feature in everyone's story in esports, you know? Like, it's unfortunately something that you can't avoid, right? Yeah. Any, anyway, because it's so, it's so personal, you know? Like, the relationships with the people, there's always going to be some kind of fuck-up <laughs> in that sense, right? Okay. So... You've st you still, I guess, jointly hold this. Well, no, he has the safe now have one more game because of the series they played. Something like that, anyway. No, he already has it because he was, I think... He one was game one game already? behind you, I think. Yeah, yeah. So right? he already played it without the last week. So, yeah. yeah. He's already going up. Yeah, but it still <laughs> doesn't really matter. Like, we we yeah, can throw that one thing. away. Still, still up there with having been playing since the beginning of VCT, right? Yeah. So... I want to ask a really open question. Just tell me about your your journey to becoming one of the, you know, most well-known players in, in Valorant. I mean, it was kind of like a, a tragedy, tragedy in another career and became a retaining chapter in a new one completely in Valorant, you know? Because for me, the last the pre-story before I even transferred to Valorant was Corona happened, it literally hit. And the first major in CSGO got cancelled. Do you mind, sorry, Nikki, do you mind moving your mic a bit closer to your mouth? Can you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Is it better now? Yeah. Hello, it's just hello, a, hello, just hello, a little hello. bit of noise. Yeah. The closer you have it, the better. It's fine. Carry on. Yeah. So the tragedy was very simple. The first major in CS got cancelled, and all the orgs pulled out from esports in CS for at least a year, and there was no roster changes. I knew it 100%. No teams was going to do any changes. Uh, no new rosters, nobody's building a new team, and everything is going to be moved to online. So I got left without any opportunities, and the only opportunity I had was to play FPL Magday, which is a face of Pro League that is like pros and people that qualify from pugs. And it was a, it was a bad environment I didn't want to be part of. 
It's just mm-hmm. like I was not enjoying it anymore. Like the pug, I, I like the team environment more. I like the schedule the team has and playing those games at like five, six in the morning just to make some money on the side. I didn't want to do that. So that's when Valorant came out. You know, at the mm-hmm. start I tried it, did not like it whatsoever. Then gave it a go after two months of their like updates dropping and fixing the game, and the game felt a bit different when you come the second time. You know, like the second mm-hmm. time is like a no, a good way to judge when you try it for the second time. Same goes with anything in life, you know. First time is usually a fail. And second time you might succeed, like the thing, or whatever, you know. It goes applies to all the all the small bits in life. So yeah, and then, again, that started me joining my ex-teammate in CS, which was Lowell. Mm. My, alongside with new players that never played professionally. Three new players in the league that never played professionally. Actually, no, I'm lying, too. And we assembled a roster that was pretty strong. And yeah, that's what started my career. Tragedy, tragedy turned into something, you know, completely new career path. Mm, mm. Tell me about b- b- before this. I mean, go go right back. What was the first kind of game that you played seriously? Was it CS or did you play anything no. before that? No, the very, very, very... F- I mean, the first two, I would say, because I was swapping between them. It was Quake. Mm. It was Quake uh, Arena. It was not. I don't know if it counts as Quake Three or Quake Two. I don't remember the. We used to play that a lot, and then the other one was COD Four Pro Mod. Ah. Back when, I was, back when I was like six or seven, I was like, I got introduced in the LAN cafe because that was a very popular thing, and we would have literally LANs. I would, <laughs> I would spend almost all my school after school time there, like playing on LANs, pretty much, because the full internet cafe would be twenty PCs. So it was not big, you know. It was hard to to get PCs back that back at that time, and it, you know, like yeah. it would be everyone was like addicted to it, you know. Like nobody has PCs. We come here, then there is like Call, Call of Duty installed, there is Quake installed, and everything is set up for the LAN server. So you literally yeah. you look around, you want to play, you want to play, you know, and it's like everyone's yeah, let's play. And then you'd be like, even if there's no five v five, four v four, you'd be like two v twos, one v ones, you know. You would just yeah. play something like that. It's like all the time playing in a duel or something. So yeah, I would say. Pot four, and then after that was CS and Quake. So, of so when you got into it, I guess was it about kind of hanging out with your friends, playing with your friends, going to the LAN cafe, and really doing this because you know it was it was what kind of gave you that community. Yeah, which I which I, I mean, think is the same for a lot of people, right? At the start, I didn't really care, but once people say, you know, I never wanted to pursue this, but when people say that you're pretty good at it and you should give it a try or like you sit down mm. like like mm, maybe i should give it a shot you know like maybe what if i go all in and see what happens you know never you never know and then that first that happened when i remember i watched this old cs go actually i watched frag movies before but the one that caught my eye the most was the old cs go movie by tweede that was about nip they run 87 and zero or something and when they looked at big check I like know that I know it, yeah. Drones or something, and I was like, you can actually make money of this? Because it was like, in Lithuania, it was not as popular about esports. Mm. Like, we didn't know anything. It was just such a dark niche. I mean, there was lands and people were playing, but as a newcomer, there was no introduction, you know? Like, what I played before was one thing, and then there's actually tournaments happening, and I didn't even know, because there's, like, there's no publicity on it. There's mm. no way to reach it. If you know, you're part of it. If you don't know, you don't, you're not part of it, so... Yeah, and then I saw that video, and I was like, you can actually make money out of this. And then I Google, started Googling, they're paid to play the game. They're, you know, they're traveling the world. One tournament is in DreamHack, the next one is in Finland. And then you're like, mm, maybe, you know, maybe there's a chance. And I'm like, okay, let's give it a try. Let's see what's gonna happen, what happens, you know. So how did you, how did you start doing that, right? I mean, you know, for the people out there that are, are still, you know, well, I guess, I guess, Obviously, PCs are kind of more popular now, so people probably got it in their home or whatever, but they've got their friends online, they're playing it, and maybe their friends have said, you know, you're, you're pretty good. Maybe you should try and take this a bit more seriously. How did you kind of start taking steps forwards with that? I mean, the very first step is being, I, I said it to myself, and I'm very proud about it, is being realistic with yourself. Mm-hmm. I was like, can I compete against, against these people? Can I sacrifice this much time to be good? Can I do a lot of things? Because that's the biggest and the worst mistake people do because they don't they don't know how to manage time and obsession becomes obsession becomes into being degenerate a bit you know i'll use that word because 
people don't know how to balance time and that's the thing that's the worst thing because people quit school they have like no offers no nothing yet and they're just mm. quitting school quitting their job that pays well to pursue a dream that you know it's a minority that does it it's like zero, like i would say 0.1 percent that does it in the world like 0.01 percent that does it in the world there's like there is pros but realistically the ones that get paid and make money is like 0.01 in the entire yeah. world you know it's just being very realistic and i said to myself like i set goals and i slowly work to them through them you know like i set the amount of hours i want to reach how do i rank how do i like so to say track my skill is just like i went playing face it i mean before it was eca in cs yeah and i was like can i climb through these ranks i gave myself a month if i can go from this rank to this rank from this rank to this rank until i re reached rank s which was like fpl back in the day yeah and i was like okay i reached it in a short period of time that means i'm doing something good i can be probably a pro player because i'm disciplined in that with mm. the putting goals and working towards them so why not you know i'm still studying i can do it on the side it doesn't take that much time of my studies so i can manage it but if it was that i am busy fully with school if i had a job or something i would not have done this at all i just i'm a very realistic person and i think i wish people would be more realistic with esports at all you know yeah you and it doesn't life. i don't think it has to be such a big rush yeah you know exactly. i think people think they're on a timer and they're not and actually a mentor of mine said this to me that it does it really have to be this or this can it be this and this and then eventually there comes a decision point right eventually when yeah. someone says okay look i want you to play full-time for my team here this this much money then then you can decide yeah, right you can make a decision yeah but i think you're right that a lot of people rush rush into it yeah a lot i've i mean i'll tell you one thing that i know so many stories of players that had a lot of potential mm. but that potential dries off the moment you join in and you understand that you have to work a lot and mm. they don't understand it and uh, you they get pressured they get depressed because they never worked a normal job they're super young they're like 17 18 first time working you know like esports I, this is the famous quote that I know from Hex. Do you know who Hex is? In no, I don't. Tell me. It's um, this guy created like a COD organization back in in NA, Opti Gaming. If you know, probably heard of oh, yeah. Opti Gaming. Yeah, He's yeah. the owner of Opti, and he said the very like the most popular clip he has, I think, is talking about esports. It's a 24/7 job that has no vacations, no sick days. You have no family time, and you have to sacrifice it because there's mm -hmm. going to be some young guy somewhere else in the world that's going to be more hungry than you and he's going to replace you and that's the mentality that you have to if you're in esports you have to sacrifice a lot and people do not understand it and when that happens that's the break point and they're like yeah i mean studying was not as hard maybe i should go back my job at you know summer is i mean i would i get paid a minimum but i don't have to work as hard you know i can just sit play on my phone chill you know like it's fine i'll come back i'll play video games after it's gonna be yeah. fun it's the same thing you know um, but yeah I think that's the reality people don't understand in esports, and I think it's the harsh reality that people don't understand about esports. Is that it's one of the hardest career paths you could choose, right? It's so competitive and it takes that's so much thing. sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, I have a, a play uh, a player that uh, reached out to me not so long ago, and and I guess what I was what I said to him was, you need to realize what it is you really want. Is it that you just want to sit at home playing video games all day or is it that you want to be the absolute best? Because those are two very distinct things, yeah. right? And only That's one of those cool. things leads to the outcome that... Yeah, you want to, to get, pretty much. Yeah, and right? That's, if you... that's, yeah. That's super, like, what you just said, it's like, you want to sit and play video games at home, that means, okay, the other option for you is to stream and do content, which will be sitting at home you know, you're doing the same thing, but then if you want to go pro, you have to understand that you're not going to be only sitting at home, but you're going to be traveling like I did in CS. I played in tier two teams. I never reached tier one. Realistically, I mean, I, I was tier one, 1 1.5, I call it, because uh, I was yeah. a step in, but a step out also because it's relying on the team, you know? And the, the teams I had, I achieved good results, but at the same time, I was traveling almost 250 days a year. I was not at mm. home 250 days in tier two. That's not tier one. Tier two, including boot camps, tournaments, and like you have to do content for the organization. You're consistently flying. 
it takes a lot of time and you know you miss out on birthdays you miss out if you have a girlfriend you miss out on i mean unless you can bring it with you if you're financially you get paid enough you can do that european mm-hmm. flights are not that expensive but once it goes to america it wants to go to asia or anywhere like you know those further it's like it's stacks up you know you get paid but if you have to take a person with you it costs a lot of money so your girlfriend might stay at home and then you're like long distancing and it's just usually does not work out unless you have a very strong mental you and your partner and mm. and it, people get depressed about it because of that, you know, like you miss out your parents. Like, you know, also the big thing I understood that playing esports, like I'm getting older, but also my family is getting older. And I'm not seeing yeah. like my parents are getting older and I'm not seeing them as much. You know, I'm living in Berlin, living somewhere else. And it's like you miss them. You miss a birthday party. You miss a lot of things, you know, like you just life, friends, you know, seeing everybody evolve around you, you miss it. You know, it's like it kind of pushes you forward. And. Yeah, it, it it it's funny because like yeah, I've had this same this same thought, and actually, predominantly, probably the main reason that I haven't pursued this full time. You know, I had opportunities to go full time, and I I actually chose not to do them. I chose to go the other way, right? I had that. I had that. You either do this or this, and I chose to 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 stay at university to study yeah. and to, and to do that because yeah, I think you only have really like three three things you could do, right? Like you can either go for your career, you can have strong relationships, or you can have your friends, and you, you, you realistically with esports you're gonna sacrifice a lot a lot probably just like for the job of it. yeah like 80 90 percent i know for experience like the friend circles i was in before really good friends i mean it gets to the point that you don't get invited to birthday parties anymore because yeah. it's like they called you six times you know seven times he looks at the phone like i mean he's gonna say no what's the point of calling you know yeah it's a weekend you want to go out you go it's a good weather Let's go summer. I mean, I can't. I'm working. I'm grinding. You know. Yeah. And especially we're we're the same age, right? Well, you're you're yeah. one year one year one year younger than me. So yeah, it's it gets to that point where, as as well for me, you know, like I've got my partner. I'm thinking I want to buy a house. I want to settle down. You know, I want to have a stable life. I want to think about having kids eventually. Yeah. You know, and people need to realize the long-term implications of that decision, right? Yes. Um, and I'm, it's something I don't absolutely don't want to dissuade, dissuade people from doing esports. I love it. It's I, I love it. And I spend an enormous amount of time doing this stuff. I'm the opposite person because I want people to try it, to see it, but I know how much mm-hmm. effort it takes to get to it. And also I say that once you get dropped in the shark tank, you have to be the biggest shark you can be. Mm, because mm. you have to fight for your spots in the most of the teams. It's a big, I would say the word nepotism in a lot of esports, you know, like mm, mm. it's the cycle of the players. You get recycled 24 seven. And like, I have been removed from teams. I didn't want to be removed from just mm. because it's a nepotism thing. And it's like a player that's slightly better than you by 2% on organizations that are being run for profit. They don't care about you. The orgs are, they, they are run to make profit of you. You're like, yeah. um, like you're a hard worker, like pretty much like laborer, you know, like you yeah. work, like you want to dig, you find somebody to dig something and at your like house or something. And it's like, you find the cheapest option and the guy that will do it for cheapest, you know, and that's like, you will, he will get tired. You don't care. Like you, you made profit of him, you know, like you don't, you don't have to break your back. You know, somebody else is breaking yeah. your back, you know, and it's like very simple. You try shoveling for uh, seven hours and see how you feel, you know, it's, it's very simple. <laughs> So yeah, I say usually I'm very realistic. I say like, listen, the amount of, I say the things that we just talked about, like the family, the stuff that you have to sacrifice and people literally understand it. And like this phrase about family and friends, like I think a lot, it's like a good standard in my part of the world, you know, like I call like Eastern Europe, even like the the Balkans, it's like the same mentality. So they kind of understand it, but like for some people I met in Eastport, they don't care. They like mm. they can live without their family. They visit one time a year. They're completely fine. And I'm like, I don't know. I just feel sad, you know. Like as I said, it's just like your parents are getting older. If you're lucky to have them for a long time, you know, like some people are less lucky, you know. That's very simple. Mm. And you're gonna miss it. You're gonna regret it. And I know this for a fact because I have a lot of people in Esports that have lost their like their parents, both parents, and mm. you know they they regret it. And they always said like, I wish I had spent more time with my family. Because the money is good now, but it cannot replace that. The money cannot fill the gaps mm. of a close person that is actually like blood blood related to you. No, now not like just a friend or your girlfriend will not even or your wife will not even replace 
what is your like your dad or your mom realistically all of your life that's very very rare to happen so yeah. mm. I tell people to make a consideration regarding that thing that you're gonna miss out on a lot of things yeah it's so important I think we've talked a lot about I think what is maybe one of the most important points I think for people that are trying to pursue this as a career um and I think you've kind of covered this point, but I want to ask it maybe like directly. How difficult do you think it is to go pro? I think it's easy and difficult. It's like a double-edged blade. Mm. I think if you're talented, you'll make it through. But the second part of the blade, this, the other part of the blade, is going to be that you cannot maintain it. You know, it's, that's the biggest problem. Like I say the biggest problem that I've seen in esports is it's not about making it. It's about maintaining it for a long period of time. And mm. people don't understand it. It's like anybody can make it. I believe you can take a lot of players that could go into tier one, be there for a year, and then fall off. There's like mm -hmm. a list of players I could make. It's been a normality for a long time because they just stagnate and be lazy, you know, or like too much work. What's the point? And I think it's, I think it's easy to go pro, but I mean, if you want to try, it's easy to go pro. It's easy, you can do it within a year in any game. Realistically, if you're, I say, I say this all the time. If you're very good as a player and you have value, the orgs will find you. You don't mm. have to have no social media. Trust me, they will find a way to contact you. Yeah. They will find a way. They will find a way. Literally, they will find a way to do it. It's very simple. If you're the best, like you say, I, and I, yes. you know what? And I totally yeah. agree with you. I've been out there and I've scouted players and I've yeah. seen they've got, they've done nothing. They've got no VLR. They're just like you know a ranked exactly. demon that you you see that potential exactly. in them. You know they could do it if if they have all of the other things. I guess which is really the point I want to get to is what do you think it then takes to like you have been, been on so many high-performing teams for so long. What is it you think that gives you the longevity? I think my biggest like feature, I'm a hard worker, you know? I put up the hours. I know that I need to put up the hours, and I'm very realistic with myself. I say mm. if I don't like to play something or I'm bad at something, I say that I'm bad at something, and I am very vocal about things, and I tend not to lie because I know that the lie comes back in a circle and comes back at you. In esports, especially creating mm -hmm. drama, I know I tried to avoid it, but you know, it's just like the main drama that all the teams I had is was due to performance and people not working. And mm -hmm. it's a big nepotism in the org that you know your friend is getting bullied, you jump up, you jump in to protect your friend. That's the main reality that I had. All the drama is literally based on that. And I mean, if I play in a high tier org, I want to bring results to the high tier org. Because there's yeah. benefits not only for me, it's benefit for everybody. And I think, I think I had better numbers when I played in higher caliber orgs, you know, because they have a good backing. They have, they invest a lot in you. They take care of you, but they also want to return from it. You know, it's not yeah. like they're giving the money for free. It's not a handout. So yeah, I think my thing is mainly like I'm a consistent worker that is willing to put the hours if people are willing to put the hours. You know. And mm. I think the main thing that rosters, the, the rosters I played failed because there's a peak and then there's a big drop because people get lazy. There's two people working on the team and the other three are not working. And then it's like, that's when the, the roster falls off very fast. And I, I could say for all the teams I played, I had it in all the teams. It's such a, yeah, you highlight a point that I think I'm acutely aware of as well right now. Because this is, this is the real challenge, right, is where you... And I think a lot of this is on the organizational staff is to choose those right people, right? The people that you okay. know aren't going to give up are going to are going to keep on putting that effort in. It's really about screening the people at the beginning to make sure they have they have that. But it's hard at the same time. Uh, regarding this, it's very hard because there's, I mean, right? There's a period of time you need to gather the roster. You cannot just build the roster. You don't have a year. You have two months, and you have to make the best mm. options. That's why the way the nepotism comes in and it's like this recycling the same players because I could I had like a few players like I probably have like five players that I could pick from rank it and I could play, probably win a trophy with. Yeah, yeah. But it will never happen because the org is like afraid. We can pay they're afraid even to pay them the bare minimum of the league, which is you know very low for any standards. Mm -hmm. Just to give a chance to these people, even if your roster will fail, I would just do that because you're but you're growing. You could grow a very good roster, you know, like you put. Three young people with two experienced people, and you have a wombo combo that can literally win you trophies. Because they learn of you, you learn of them. You know, like you see a young kid. That's the other thing, you know, like I think it's important. It's fun to have, and it's good to have a young roster because they're hungry and young. 
but I think you also need to have old people in the. I mean, old esports, old. I would say. E-sports I know what old. you mean. Anything <laughs> yeah. about twenty three and twenty four, and I'm not saying this to market myself or whatever, but just overall, it's. I think that's the best balance. That's the best success I had in the teams when I had young and old people. When I mean, it was full young, there's such a big disbalance. It's insane. You know, it's full of. 50-50 people, I call it, you know, like, one day yeah. they're happy, next day they're sad, next day there is, and when you have, like, an older guy, it's a bit, like, stale, you know, not as, much, not as like, energetic, I would say, but he's there to do the job, you know, and then they, it's like an energy trade in the team. Yeah, the young guy yeah. gives motivation to the old guy to be like, okay, he's playing six rankings, I'm like, hmm, I need to do seven, then, you know, it's like a bit of, like, competition, <laughs> like, show, like, the, the young kids how to do it, you know, and then they do, like, yeah, but they give you a different approach from the game and everything they show, like the young guys show them how to approach the the game from different point of view because you have like a lot of, you know, so to say, they have a different way of seeing the game. Yeah, yeah. But well, I think person th- has, yeah, has a different completely view of the game and you learn of that, you know, it's the energy trade that happens 24-7 in the team, which is good. I think it's good. It's a good balance. I think in everything balance is important right like and you want a diversity of of viewpoints and that comes in age with life experience in their approach and thought process to the game because that's where you're going to get the best team right because you're going to see everything and you're going to you're going to find actually the best solution if everyone's listening to each other and you, you have that kind of right team culture um i, I think that i think that's so important and I, I this actually this really um goes well on to another question I had is like, I guess for, for you what kind of team do you think that you fit into best if you were gonna gonna build a team what kind of people would you choose how would you know how would that team work and how would they play I think I'll, I'll I'm a bit of a different person I would say I would base it of the country you're from working okay, with teams yeah. right now I think it would be based on country and mentality because I understood how different mentalities work and that also involves into laziness and work ethic I feel like mm. I understood for esports, I had so many teammates from all kinds of the world. I would pick teammates that are from similar, so to say, cultures. Like Eastern European cultures, Eastern European mm. Balkans were kind of the same. Also, like Russia, CIS, we have the same mentality. Involved with a few people that are from different countries. You no, know, I would say like the mass majority, like 70%, has to be from Balkans and like Eastern Europe and CIS. And then one guy that's like, I would say Western, you know, like completely Western. To bring like sure. the you know the different view of the things, yeah. Because because I'll tell you one thing, it's just like, and I've been tracking this for quite a while in all esports, even if the Americans or whatever like, it's not a true American that is like winning. It's like he's two nationalities, you know. It's it's like American is like the America is you know like mixed culture. Like there's so many people, mm-hmm. but if you look realistically and the heritage of like the person where is he from, he's usually from either Balkan, Polish, you know like Lithuanian like Estonian, any any part of the world that's just like because and that I'm going to that point because I think my opinion is like we're from a different world that we're more hungry because we live kinda of in poverty, you know, we saw how our parents grew up. We're mm. more hungry than a person that's from Sweden, from Denmark or from Finland that yeah. the government and whatever protects you and or even UK, you know, like you get not a handout but the government helps you. For us we're kinda of relying on ourselves all the time and i think that's the hunger when seeing our parents how they grew up knowing all the stories how it was it's just people are more motivated to not only go to esports but also maintain in esports for like the generational thing kind of you know for yourself for your family and whatever because i mean i still look at it you know all the best players in cs or either balkan or cs which is like a big country big countries that are Mm. poor you know, like poor people are usually the most successful people in esports that were from poor countries. You you bring a really important point that so I don't know I have no idea who this quote is from, but as, uh, the quote the quote goes, uh, "Easy times breeds weak people, hard times breed strong people." I want to say David Goggins, but <laughs> it, uh, I think be, it maybe yeah. goes further back than that. But yeah, the, but the point still stands, and and I and I, you know, it's interesting, right? I mean, I wouldn't say. I, I know I know I know what you mean. I think that people with a background where, you know, I grew up, uh, my parents were divorced and my mum worked crazy Same. hours to support us, right? And I saw the work ethic that she 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 had and thought, Well, I've got to be like that, right? 
and you know and, and from my grandparents as well you know they grew up during the war and they were very much about you know you do your fucking best you work super hard they came from no money they then saved up to buy a shop they had a shop they worked super hard you know their whole their whole lives and i agree with you that people that have had an easy life they don't know really what it is to work hard what is to work yes and it's very hard to work with those people in the team environment it's super hard and mm. they're like you're not intentionally lazy but that's how they're used to it you know? exactly like and it's like it pisses you off to a point and that's that's where the drama starts you know like when you have people that are three people are hungry and there's two people that are lazy and it's like a big disbalance mm. and you can say mm. whatever you want the guy does not want to wake up the guy does not want to play as much as you do the guy does not want to do anything you know like completely he just wants to play the game and have fun the term have fun it kind of i know we're playing video games we have to have fun but once you go pro the fun disappears it's fun when you're winning. It's fun when you're traveling and getting mm -hmm. good placements in tournaments. It's fun when you're yeah. meeting with people from other teams. It's fun. But people don't... That fun kind of mixed up because I think... I mean, I'll say it very simply, and I know it's it's good to say in your podcast, because I feel like the new generation of esports players is a bit... A lot of our pussies. Like, mm -hmm. they're growing up to be pussies. Realistically, it's like very soft shell people that it's hard to work with. And it's you have to either have five of them in the team, and you cannot mix them up, or you cannot have them at all. And yeah. say there too, it's hard because the old generation does not mix very well with the new generation. It's the same as our parents, you know, as an example. It would be like, you don't agree with everything, you know? It's like they have their own views, like with technology, with something. It's like they don't want anything. And that's, it's like I never, it's the same thing in teams, you know? Like when you have too many young people, actually that's rare. There is some people that are from those countries that are like super motivated. There is, but that's like a very, very small percent. Yeah. Super small percent, like a small margin. There's people like hungry, hungry to do things, which is, yeah. Yeah, it's funny you f you find that, and I think like for for me, I'm at a point where I want to do more of this and bring value to the people that are going to seek out the podcast, that are going to seek out the information, that are going to do the work, and to work with people like that because I maybe like you, am tired of working with people that won't work. Yeah. You know, that That's won't give it's everything, you know, yeah. mm. mine too. We're, we're, we're absolutely on the same wavelength as that. And I think, and I think I'll go on top of that. And I think the things that I won in those teams and I look back to it a lot, you know, I had that and I, you know, I valued it and I had that, but at the same time, it's like a big monopoly in esports. The players mm -hmm. get taken away from you. You know, the rosters get disbanded because you have to realistic, like money runs the world, you know, like everybody wants money. All the jokes aside, like there's good teams to get this disassembled just because some guy, you know, like you win a trophy and a guy gets an or comes and he's like, Yeah, we'll double your salary. Come, we'll buy you out, we'll give you better conditions. And the guy's like, I want a trophy already, I'm kind of established. Why mm -hmm. can't I do it in the other team, you know? And that's the downfall. And I think it's hard to find people that are loyal to you, too. It's also the thing in esports, mm -hmm. very hard, very difficult. Been for that, you know, I stopped kind of get offended by it because I understand how the ecosystem works and I completely don't get mad at it anymore. Like, I just think about the guy got an offer and he's leaving. It's all business. Sucks. You get mad, it sucks, but then at the same time, you're like, it's business, nothing you can do. Move on, you know. You need mm. to find a new guy. Yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. Yeah, so I had a, another question that is kind of going off on a bit of a tangent now, but. You know, you were one of the last year. You were up there. You were in the top ten in terms of VLR rating. You were one of the one of the top yeah. ra rated players. Why do you think it is that you're that you've been dropped now from from Giants? What's your kind of perspective on this? I I mean, it's like I want to say it's a mutual thing because I'll explain the full story in a way that the team needed a change. The yeah, team sure. Like a big change. Uh, also, the orgs is it's it, it is orgs want to have young players. I'm already 26. I'm gonna be 27 this year. Still hungry to compete. My motivation is not low, and you know, just from an org perspective, financially it's hard to maintain me because I'm already like an established player. Established players mm. get paid a lot. It's yeah. cheaper to get a young player, pay him pay him the league minimum. It's also a good balance for the team. So sure. to sum it up, it's a balance of money and it's a balance of getting first blood in the team. I mean, maybe it was not the way I see it. I think maybe it's the vibes were not happening. You know, like I was vibing with mm. some people, not vibing as much with others. 
I did not have fights because the people create ramen and I say it very simple, I did not fight with anybody to a point that I'm like, I cannot work with them or something. There was arguments. It has to be arguments in a team. It's like a relationship. A team is like a relationship. Like, you know, you have to maintain it. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be discussions. There's going to be disagreements and you have to go through them, you know, to grow as a bigger person. So I mm -hmm. think it was a balance of everything combined, including org stuff and also team stuff. And also the thing that I didn't want to play the roles I was playing anymore because I know that I can bring more more value. And I said to them, I said to them clearly that I would like to change roles or I'll just go because, as I said before, if I if I don't see that I can give max potential to the team, I'm not gonna sit there and farm money. I that's mm -hmm. the reason why I switched teams so many times because I'll say the word that I have balls to do it. You know, I am not afraid to sacrifice something I have for something greater. You know. And I'm not just like going and cutting throats and going through the ladder. I'm just going, if this team uses me and I play good this year in those roles and then I get different roles again, it's a lot of stress for me to relearn them. That's the first thing. Instead of knowing how what to play and, for example, playing duelist, I played all of my life and then like playing yeah. a bit of initiator, I know how to play that for all my life and then I'm going to Sentinel and then I go to Champs, which is also the main reason why I probably got cut because the performance I had in Champs, it was dreadful from my point of view i even said it in the team meeting we had after like i played completely terrible but then i understood the thing why i completely terrible because i'm competing against people that have Dang thousands of hours no they <laughs> yeah, have like on their wall they have like a thousand hours on those roles and i'm like i have like probably i play champs and we qualify to champs with me playing at 70 no like 65 percent which is like 50 is individual skill 15 is the agent understandment against people that are like in the 90s even some yeah. are at 110 realistically they're super good at that and i just don't have the hours and i don't cannot catch up to it you know like i can but i can do it right now when i have no team because i can kill rank it and i can yeah. get the knowledge in but when you're screaming you're not screaming the same app every day you're not mm. screaming the same agents every day it's like it's humanly impossible so i cannot work for like 12 hours you know like i, I can do 10 11 you know like including individual level you know you have to watch vods uh you, you, your own vods not anybody else's vods you know you have to look for guides videos on trips and killjoy setups and cypher stuff you know and it just gets to a point there is no time for yourself and i'm like i can't do this anymore i'm stressing out i feel mentally drained there was after the g2 like not making to franchise i was not i don't want to use the word depressed i was not depressed i was a bit confused and sad um you know, like that, all the Andrew Tate stuff and whatever happened and Carlos getting cancelled. Uh, yeah. yeah. I got put in the crossfire and you're like sitting there confused. How did this happen from being on top here? Yeah. And within six months just going bam and then like I cannot get sold to any organization because they're asking for a ridiculous amount of money and from mm -hmm. having 12 off from all the franchise team offers to having none and end up on Giants that took the risk and bought me out to, um, you know, like I'm thankful to Giants for that, but you know, it's not my role. I came there as a last, they took me as a last, uh, yeah. like a last chance, you know, like, yeah, they, yeah. They're like they invest in me saying that this guy will learn the role. He will be decent at it. Not the best, but decent at it. He's consistent. So let's take a chance on him. And that's the thing that also the reason why I got removed from Giants is because I came in as the last opportunity and they looked at me as like the last thing, you know, like, or sort of say, when you're not yeah, the, the priority, backup, the backup option. You're not, yeah, like the backup option, you're going to leave it. I mean, they're going to stay as the backup option. So that's the, the way I understood the process. Mm. So, yeah, overall, no hard feelings to anybody in the team. Nobody against. Same goes with the org. I left on, I left on a good note, you know, that was, it was not like drama that people go through and they get removed. They're like, fuck you for doing this and that, you know, like, <laughs> I hate you. I have nothing bad to say, neither about the players. There is differences, but at the same time, it's just... I think it's time to grow up, you know, if there's differences. I took mine in, and if you don't take what you learn from me, you know, like the feedback and whatever, it's... I think it's yeah. a matter from esports, from all the players in that team, if they don't grow up also, in a way. Mm. They have to evolve. So, how do you think you've evolved over your time at Giants, from when you started and to now? I... The best thing I think I I evolved at is just learning the fights to take and the fights not to take, mm. and not saying to save my ass, but just seeing the environment and what kind of players I have, because one person, if you raise the voice at them, they will 
get scared and shut down. One person, you can say everything straight to the face, and they will like, yes, understand it. And he gives you feedback back, and you're like, yeah, understood. And you just nod, and you shake hands, and at the night, you're drinking beers, you know, chilling, talking about life. And there's mm. players that, like, cannot take either. And mm. you have to know how to work with them. Mm. I think that's the most important part. You have to know how to work with people. And I think now I'm starting to realize what things I need to do even more regarding that. Because I think I'm a sharp knife, and if you don't know how to use me, I... I can cut pretty deep, you know, that's a very simple thing. Sharp tool, not only on the server, but also, you know, just in the team environment. And that's one of the reasons why I'm probably hard to work with, with you know, in the team. And yeah, I think just maturity overall. With age, maturity comes and experience of maturity comes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see that. Probably why a lot of the coaches are a bit older too, right? Because that life experience goes a long way. Right? Yeah, I, mean, I think I, I stay very realistic regarding coaching. I don't believe that you can be a coach if you're not a certain age. Hmm. I do not believe that. Certainly not a head coach. Can... Mm. No, no. Even uh, the best you can be is probably an analyst, realistically. Hmm. Because uh, just writing notes and seeing what enemy team does, it's one thing, and controlling the team environment and having experiences not only with just players, but in life with relationships, because people, like, also you have to understand, if you're working with teams, they will go down, you're, they will go for a cycle of, Growing up, changing their thought process to dating to having, and you have you're you're getting put into that thing that you need to know how to balance it. You know, like mm. if you never had a girlfriend, how can you help? The player will come to talk to you. You know, like you have to give like good opinions. And I think the best player, I mean, the best coaches are the player, the the, the poor players that are older and they're like they're kind of the dad of the team. You know, yeah, like, you have to be the dad of the team. You have to manage the drama. You have to. If two people fighting, you need to know how to split them up. You cannot take sides on them. That's the most important thing because I think also that nepotism comes from coaching. Oh, yeah, like for the, sure. play, the player plays bad and the coach is like, no, I like him. Hmm. I like him. What can you do? Three people in the team are voting, but the coach has a, a better, a higher vote than you. It's like a teacher, you know, in school. Like you have an argument yeah. with the teacher. The teacher is going to be always correct regardless. They will call your parents. You will never win the argument unless your parents are like trusting you. You know, like uh, sort of say. Yeah. I know how your kind of relations we had, but I have like certain school. I mean, I had certain classmates that had that problem. You know, like the, we know all the drama that's happening in the school. Like we see the argument with the teacher, and the teacher is incorrect. But then she calls the parents of the guy, and they she tells the story, and the the parents don't believe it's their son. You know, in the school. So same goes in the team environment. You know, like. The coach says one thing and the work believes the coach. Mm. That's why a lot of the teams do not evolve because the coach doesn't understand what he's doing in the team, you know. So Yeah, I think it's a real balance, isn't it, being a coach? It's it's, it's a yeah. it's hard in different ways to being a player, for sure, right? Yeah. It's 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 a different it's it's interesting, right? Because I mean, I'm sure you've heard this like play, players are like, Oh yeah, that that coach is bronze and I'm like that's got that doesn't fucking matter. He could be well, okay, bronze is maybe an exaggeration, right? But you know, he's he's not radiant and oh therefore he can't coach me. And there's all these ranked coaches out there. And you're like, but that's got uh, nothing to do with coaching. That is true, but then you have to understand then it's a different category that you have to apply to coaching. There's mm. performance coach, there's an mm. analyst, and that's the main coach that is like the strategical guy that's watching the game live and can give you the call on the pause. Or I don't know how it works in other games besides CS and Valorant that you have a pause or like after the map he has to come. You failed, you have to do this. This guy needs yeah. to do that. You have to do that. And he's fixing the problems on the instant because most coaches don't know how to do that. They they can do that when the game is over. They watch the VODs. They have 12 hours to do so or like two days to do so or a week to do so. Mm. And they like they can give you a resume on what you need to fix. But the main coach for me, and I know from experience, the best coaches I had is the guys that mid-game with after that six rounds are like, yeah. or with the player experience, which were, which played in top teams or whatever, mm. they're like, change the setup completely. You need to stand there. They're completely abusing you here. Uh, they're also how they portray to the players. You cannot sound too aggressive because if, the, if you feel from your coach that you're the problem during a game, it might go mental in you. And that's usually a problem with people that are from the countries that are, I said before, you know, it's usually mm. those people that collapse because just all the pressure and the guy's sitting like this. Yeah. From dropping 20, he's dropping five kills in the game, you know, and you're like, yeah. 
that was the problem. Like the coach that doesn't know how to during the tech pause or I mean the tactical pause to portray not only how to speak properly and you know how who's the problem, not to make it that you sound like it's a problem, you know, and you need to because yeah, that's kinda like you get disappointed, I would say. Overall, yeah, I know what you mean. It's not it's, it, it's it should not be an emotional thing, it's a factual yeah. thing. So like, look, you need to yeah. do this thing, you need to do this thing, we're going to do this, and now we're gonna play this setup and then rounds after this, exactly. you're going to play a setup like this where they can't abuse you here and they're not gonna do this thing over here. Exactly. That that's it, right? A very factual, yeah. straight to the point, do these things, this is gonna solve yeah. your problem and watch out for this or you know, whatever other information you're gonna fit in yeah. there. Yeah. But that's the thing also regarding the rank thing and also I think there has to be a point that the coach has to have had in this so to say stints of like coaching because I think it's also respect from the players. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you hundred percent I had coaches that were not even players and they get zero respect in the team. Mm. Mm. Zero. You can say whatever you want. Mid discussion the guy will be shut the fuck what you're talking. You don't even play the game. From mm. players. It's trust me, it's a normal thing and Unless you were like rank one for I don't know in all the games you played, you know there's Overwatch that you've been rank one for six acts. I mean you're like rank one radiant for the last two years or something. Then people respect you. But if you're just uh, like diamond one, you know like you never play the game and you're like coaching a top team, it's your opinion will not be taken as you know like as like opinion from a coach that played before. It's mm. just because it's like a kind of democracy, you know, like people respect people with results. People respect people with money, you know, it's the same thing. Same principle applies. Your CV is getting respected, you know, like it's not even an ego thing. It's just overall, like, I don't know, that's all how the players react to it. Maybe another yeah. I mean, you, American teams, I know a bit different because they're a bit more tolerant, but the EU teams, it's, it's a bloodbath, you know? Yeah. Even Ch China also has that problem. Like if you're not respected in, in the scene as a coach, I mean, unless you have a lot of authority in the org, and the org is basing your decisions off like of you, then people will respect you. But if you just come as a coach, that is like just as a coach, you know, it's gonna be hard for you to work. Mm -hmm. Or you have to be big as a person, like big as a person, not saying bulky, but you have to be like not take any shit. In. Yeah, you have to be dominant yeah. as a person. Then people will listen to you. But that's very rare to find because most coaches are like 18, 19, 20, or like. There's some peep squeak that looks, I mean, I visually, my coach has to be mature and, you know, so to say, not not physical shape, but like he has to walk like he's confident because mm. you get confidence from your own environment, you know, and if my yeah. coach is, when Miduvito is like, maybe we should end this, maybe we should that. What do you guys think? <laughs> what do you guys think? And you're like, I don't give a fuck what I play. You're the coach. You saw our performance in scrims. Just pick the fucking map. You know what? We play good. <laughs> Don't ask yeah. for opinion. Be like, if you fail, accept it. You know, you failed as a coach, not as anybody else. You know, mm. like what? It has to be dominant personality, I would say. Like, you have to be very deci decisive, I would say. The word would be decisive. Mm. Fuck, I love that word. Decisive is one of my is one of my favorite words, actually. Especially when it comes to playing as well, right? Because half the exactly. time, you, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't give a fuck if you do the wrong thing. Just do, just do the thing fucking together. And you're yeah. going to destroy them because you did it that's, well. That's the motto we had a lot of the teams. It's like if shit is falling apart, you say like, do something random, but do it together. As long yeah. as you do it together, as long as it's not one by one, somewhere on the map, you're doing a hero play. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, uh, it's hard to watch as a coach. And then it's like, it's a team yeah. game. It comes back to the same thing. It's hard to watch as a player back. I rewatched games after a loss and it's like, you sit there like, this is not what we practice. That's the first yeah. thing. Second thing is just, this is a shit show. First thing is like, what is our fucking coach doing, and why the fuck is not this is not getting called out, you know? And you're like, mm, mm. Uh, if shit is falling apart, hello, coach. We have two tech pauses. I mean, uh, two tech pauses per half, or one tech pause per half in any team or whatever. In CS, it was the same. Fix it. We have to fix it. If you don't have to fix it, you're not a coach. Very simple. You're just mm. a water boy that is like also a massage boy before the game. That's like giving a pat on your back, like, well done, son, you know, like, keep it up. And even though you're failing, you can't even hit the ball with a baseball bat. Mm. It's just like a motivator, you know, it, it cannot be like that. It honestly can't. If you want results, mm. of course. If you don't want results, if you're just... I, for those people that want to have fun, like I like to say, and there is teams like that. They build teams to have fun. I hear that term. 
this team is insane vibes, you know, like we have to have vibes otherwise we cannot play. Honestly, I can say you're in the wrong, uh, in the wrong, sort of say, sort of say, how do you say, like scene or environment or like... You're doing, you're doing the wrong, the wrong fucking thing, right? You're totally the wrong, the wrong thing. thing. You want to have good vibes, do a podcast, invite people, do, make jokes. Be like Joe Rogan, kind of. Be a comedian before. Mm, uh, mm. Be like a comedian, you know, like, and then you can do serious topics on the side on it if you want to pretend that you're working. Mm. Because these mm. points will not grow the moment people understand it. It's not fun in games all the time, even though we're playing games. Like, if people want esports to be as big as other sports, I mean, it's, it's not as easy. Not as easy as it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've covered so much, so much great stuff here. I want to ask you, what what do you want to do differently moving forwards? Now you've kind of what what's your kind of plan, and what how are you going to grow, and what are you going to do next? I said that I want to. That's the first thing regarding individual and the server is I want to have a bigger uh, agent pool that I had before. Even though I have mm. a pretty big one already in the scene, I play like six agents or seven agents. I can play consistently. I wanted to grow it even more, that I can play any roles. So it's like a Swiss knife type of thing that mm -hmm. any team can use you in different aspects, from being a duelist to being a sentinel to being a smoker to being an initiator. That's the plan I have, and I'm working on that when I'm streaming right now. Like I'm playing all yeah. different agents or focusing mainly on duelists for a month and whatever. That's the first thing. Uh, also, a lot of things regarding physical stuff I need to fix, uh, which is you know losing weight because my back hurts and i have problems mm -hmm. and i need to fix that and also that will combine into the mental thing because i remember i performed the best when i was physically in shape and i was consistently yeah. doing physical things and i was active as a person that's when i performed the best and i think the stats i had last year i could have even better which i know the things i need to fix it's yeah. mainly physical and mental things which are mental are like very minimalistic and they're super fixable, and I know the problems, and I know how to fix them. It, but that's also included not only, you know, it's also included in the physical thing. It's like a combined thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know, Trust me, I know exactly. I know exactly what you mean. Like, when I've been through phases of working really hard, being stressed, and like, oh, I don't have time to go to the gym. Yeah. That's oh, I don't have problem. time to go for a walk. And I'm like, oh, well, now I, yeah, you know, now I've got fat, and now I don't feel great in myself, yeah. and I feel weaker, you know, like, like you say. Yeah. Like, I have pain, you know, in, in my hands, I have pain, and, like, same goes with the eyes, you know, I have pain, uh, like, I I felt like I'm going old, you know, like, I'm 27, but I feel like <laughs> I'm 50, and I don't want to feel like that, and before that, I remember in CS when I was fit, you know, and I would work out regularly, I would just, mm. energetic, the energy levels are higher, like, the performance was higher, reaction time, as an example, like, I would mm. sleep better, you know, the sleep is better, uh, I was less stressed also, yeah. But that's, I think stress grows when you get older because you have more responsibilities in life, you know, like yeah, I have true. to take care of a lot of things, you know, I have a person that's I'm married, I need to take care of another person, you know, like I'm involved in a lot of things and I think it's just a normal thing. I think it's mm. just basic life things that you grew up and you need to learn how to manage it and with yeah. years you're going to get better at it. So, yeah. yeah. So once you've done this, I guess the the, the hope is to to get on another team to, to get on a, another team yep. and win some more trophies exactly that's all we say like i join the teams to win trophies i don't enjoy teams to farm money and if i wanted to farm money i can stay in tier two there's i have offers there i can sit at home do nothing and just you know make bare minimum i would say and just enjoy life and chill but i don't yeah. want that yeah. I just, you know, I said I want to at least reach 30 in esports, you know, that's my thing. I want to compete for four more years. Mm. It's like really simple, like I set a goal a long time ago and that's like, at 30 I'll decide if I want to continue or not, but I mm. want to give it all my all and then understand that for the last 10 years that I achieved the things that I wanted to achieve. Mm. And I can maybe go venture into different topics, maybe coaching, maybe nothing to do with esports, maybe go a different, completely different direction in life than... You know, it's, mm. I'm just testing myself. I'm testing if I'm enjoying it. And is that the thing I really want to do in life for the next 10 years? You know, like because esports is growing, online thing is growing, and you have to make a kind of decision in it. Mm. What kind of approach you want to be do?
So I have, I have a couple of questions that I that I like to ask everyone because they always get to like really impactful answers. I would say uh, the, the first one is, what's the biggest challenge that that you've had to overcome in your in your career, and how did you overcome it? Biggest challenge. Hmm. Time management. I would say I was very bad at it at the start. And how I overcome it is just pure discipline, doing the things you hate to do, even if it's warming up, doing your routine in aim trainers, or doing your routine in the server, putting in the hours that you need to put in. It's like, hmm, maybe I can watch a YouTube video, but then I have to do things, you know, like on the side. And then like that understanment of discipline that you affect the team also by not knowing these things or being not in shape. I think that's the main thing. It's time. I think it's a combination of uh, time, uh, time management, and discipline overall. Understanding mm. that you're playing a five, five v five team shooter. That you're a piece of the puzzle that needs to be like a soldier. You know, you kind of need to be in shape in that way. That on the server, that any t- time anything bad happens, that you can be consistent. You know, mm. pretty much you have to be reliant on, and that's it. Mm. I think that's I think that's so important. That's pure discipline. I think that's the most important thing. And it, and it goes back Basically. to sort of like a lot of what we've said already, right? About people being lazy and maybe not being motivated for the right things. Right. And I think be honest with yourself about that because I think we yeah. can all recognize when we've not got that discipline and we need to we need to step up. Yeah. I think yeah, so so important. And and, and the final the final one for me um well firstly Obviously, thank you for for giving me your time. I think it was it was nice that we were able to just hop on and do this. And I think I think there's been so much in this that's, and I hope you feel this too. That like for players that are thinking of this as a career that could really take a lot from this, right? And and I think if you if you're listening to this and and you've taken this in, then I really take it in. You know, start to implement these things in what you're doing because it's so important to to recognize what you're not doing and to really give it a hundred percent. So on on that note, I guess any any kind of final advice that we that we haven't covered that you would that you'd want to give to, to to players out there, you know, things that you think people are missing. I think the most important tip I can give from now, from playing for like ten years in esports, I would say I'm getting like my anniversary is on my birthday in November. It's almost ten years that I've been doing this, and wow, I think to understand. One important thing, the grinding mentality, it's not what you think. I think it's its about the quality of the hours, not the quantity mm-hmm. of the hours. And I think that's a big absurd, like, so to say, tragedy in a lot of things that we're getting this from the social media that need to grind, you know, like anything. Not even in esports, you need to grind, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, it, yeah. I think it's, I want to say people that right now with the experience, if I could start over and I would have this experience that I have right now, I could be pro in half of the hours that I made it into, you know, I've seen. Because I think it's just the quality. You can become a very good player just by playing three hours a day, two hours a day even. Yeah. It's just the mentality you approach the game, you know, like it's it's the mentality and um, I wouldn't say, I mean, I mean, there's talent, but I think still overall hard work beats talent all every day in esports especially because talent gets lazy. I know for a fact that so many talented players that literally are it's over you know it's over so i would say just the grinding mentality needs to change and you need to make it quality time not quantity time so you can have some balance in life yeah i think and i think people often misrepresent it as well right like because the the grind set is about giving the effort when you're doing it right it's 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 using your brain when you're doing it you're not just going into ranked and just playing ranked right like like you say you're learning the new agents you're intentionally going out there like i want to practice duelist i want to practice initiator i want to practice my setups on cypher or whatever and that's the main thing that people even came into my stream and asked and i'm like i said i'm like yeah but i don't like playing that agent i'm like what value like i say to the people that like i'm looking for a team as a player but you have to understand what value you bring to the team if you can only play duelist there is open anything like on a tracker open anything yeah you better be fucking good right (laughs) yeah there's twenty thousand people playing right now online and right iridium 
show me what you can do better than the guy that can do on the other jet, you know, like as an example. Same goes with Tracer and Overwatch. Show me what you can do. The the guy mm. that is like playing three hours a day, like he's insane Tracer. He doesn't want to go pro, but he's diffing you every time you take a duel on him. Show mm. me what is he doing better. The timings of the pulse bombs or whatever, as an example. Or there's a para one trick that is they're destroying everybody, you know, like as an example. <laughs> it's very simple. Or a widow, like what do you do different? What kind of value do you bring to the team? You have to understand. And then when you know that value, you make it even better, you know, like you evolve yeah. the value. If I'm good at flexing a lot of agents, that's the value I have. Mm. It doesn't affect mm. my performance because some people are very, very stagnated on the role that I'm dualist. And that's it. I can only play Jet or only raise one agent. And that player gets recycled every time. It's like you, you find a guy that can play two agents. What's the point of having you? You know, mm. like the meta evolves, the games evolve, and mm. you have to. Be in the meta, but also understand the quality of the time. You know, like you need to adopt to the meta and be good. Mm. So that comes back to the grinding thing because the metas are quite a grindy period of time that you need to adjust to. And I think if you know how to absorb information, I, that's a good also thing that if you're good at school absorbing information, absorbing information in esports will be a lot easier. And if you work mm. the normal job, time management will also be easier. Because you'll have some sort of discipline for the day of waking up 6 in the morning or 7 to catch a bus or drive yeah. to somewhere in the city and then, you know, by 6 you're finished. And you need to check out and the boss is under your shoulder, you know, like looking at you, you'll understand mm. the discipline of it, you know. So, mm. Yeah, mm. I think that the quality of time, usage and information, there's so much information on the internet. There's so many guides, there's so many people that yeah. do good content, you just need to look. Like, you don't even need to play. You can literally, it's the same as reading a book. If you watch all those mm -hmm. videos, you'll have enough knowledge, but then applying to it, you have to go in the game to apply it. You have to think that I'm, am I doing this correctly the same as the guy said it? Or am I doing this half ass? you know, like, and I'm like, ah, I cannot kill the guy, you know, my excuse, <laughs> I, I missed a shot, you know, I'm timing, timing again, and then. Yeah, yeah, timing. timing. I was just timing. Easy. Yes. It's, you gave the guy opportunity to do the timing on you. It's like we lose the game and we say, well, we got timed, but no. To that timing, you made six mistakes up to that timing mm -hmm. and you put yourself out of position. You didn't listen to your teammate and you'll die because of it. And it's very simple. Mm. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Nikki. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. If you want to shout out your socials or, or anything, please, please do. Live on Twitch, now daily. <laughs> For a long time, and that's it. I don't know. Come there if you want to ask any more questions. I will yeah. gladly to answer that. I try to do it as much until it gets annoying. And let's be realistic. It's the same question every two hours. You know, ten guys come in. How do I become a pro? And I repeated it. Like, not happy with that answer. Let's go to the next streamer. You know. So yeah, you can you can link this podcast now. And now you say yeah, I've answered I'll all those questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. a good thing to do. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank Cheers. you for inviting me. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye.